Hello everyone, I'm Mayor Tim Blissey and this is your Council Minute recapping the Council meeting from Monday, March 16th. Friends, we are living in an extraordinary time and it's sad to say but that feels like a bit of an understatement right now. On Sunday, March 15th, I made a local emergency declaration and on Monday the 16th, the City Council held an emergency meeting and consented to that declaration. The declaration has a 30-day effective period and formally authorizes the City to implement its emergency operations plan. The emergency operations plan describes the basic strategies through which the City will mobilize resources and conduct activities to guide and support our local emergency management efforts. The emergency operations plan is designed to coordinate resources in a way that maximizes the protection of life and property and ensures the continuity of government. In worst case scenarios, the plan will guide efforts to sustain survivors and repair and restore critical infrastructure. In the City of Bloomington, the City Manager, Jamie Verbrugge, is responsible for providing overall direction and control of City resources involved in the response to an emergency. The City Emergency Manager, Fire Chief Yuli Seal, coordinates all aspects of the plan and serves as a direct liaison to the Hennepin County Emergency Management Director. This action follows the recent announcement of closures and cancellations. The Bloomington Ice Garden, Center for the Arts, and Creekside have all been closed until at least March 23rd, and frankly, I expect that date will be extended significantly. We also canceled programs, classes, and events. You can check the city website for a complete list, but it's safe to say that everything has pretty much been canceled. Now that being said, we are not closing Civic Plaza at this time. We're going to be implementing social distancing practices for our employees and customers so that we can continue to deliver services and meet reasonable expectations for personal safety that follow guidelines from the Minnesota Department of Health and the Centers of Disease Control. Employees recently received information about expectations about who should or should not report to work, and we are continuing to provide direction for how we will facilitate teleworking and other flexible workplace options for employees. Obviously, there are many city employees who simply don't have a work-at-home option. Our critical ser city services of police, fire, and public works will continue. When you see those folks out doing their job, I think it's entirely appropriate for you to stop and to thank them. Along those lines, I want to take a moment to commend the executive leadership team and other members of our city staff for the work that's been done on this so far. There is no specific playbook that describes this is how you get through a rapidly developing pandemic. Instead, we're fortunate to have experienced, skilled, and dedicated city employees who have done a great job responding to all of this in a timely and appropriate manner. So thank you all very much. Are missteps likely somewhere down the line? Yes, I think that's inevitable. But again, because there is no template to follow on this, it's difficult, and let's be honest, the price of inaction is far greater than the cost of a mistake. Again, thank you to city staff and please keep up the good work. And similarly, is everyone going to be completely happy with every decision the city council makes over the next two or six or 12 months regarding this crisis? Obviously, no. But I think all members of the city council understand that being responsible sometimes means ticking off some people. I have full confidence in our city council to make decisions that are best for our community and I applaud them for their leadership on this so far. As we all try to figure out next steps in a situation that seems to be changing by the hour, it's important to remember how interwoven this community is. Even though we shouldn't be physically close, we are all connected. And with that in mind, we are convening a meeting of other community partners. Leaders from Bloomington Public Schools, Normandale Community College, Cornerstone, Veep, Oasis for Youth, and the Bloomington Chamber will be meeting to discuss how we can align our efforts to meet emerging community needs. As you have undoubtedly heard and read, this is going to get worse before it gets better. People are going to get very sick. Some people may die. People will lose their jobs. Businesses will fail. City revenues and ultimately city services will be severely impacted. This is a long-term, community-wide challenge, the likes of which we've never seen before. But I'm confident the residents of Bloomington are up to the task. So what can you do? First, for God's sake, stop hoarding toilet paper and other supplies. Be reasonable and responsible with your purchasing. Secondly, stay informed with facts. The Minnesota Department of Health and the Centers for Disease Control are your best bets. Locally, we will do everything possible to keep you updated of any changes at the city level. 
Third, follow the now well-known recommendations regarding social distancing, avoiding crowds, and washing your hands. And finally, help your neighbor and be kind. Right now, we can't get enough of that. Please, help your neighbor and be kind. Remember, we can't direct the wind, but we can certainly adjust the sails. We are going to get through this as a community. Through the strength of our residents and by the grace of our Creator, we are going to get through this as a community. And we're going to come out the other side, ready to tackle what's next and ready to move forward as a strong city. Thank you to all of you in Bloomington for your support this far. Thank you so much. Stay healthy and stay safe.